Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. West British crisps flavor. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Best British crisps flavor. I like that you added an extra detail at the end. Haunted <laughs> Victorian ghost child. <laughs> that got snuck on there. That's the, the one that. The ghost that talks to you, Mike. Mark, Mark. Oh, God. Oh, God. This ghost again. Let me out of your bureau. Oh, I can't let you out of the bureau, ghost of a Victorian child. We're about to record an episode about British treats that children love. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've angered the ghost. <laughs> Welcome to We Got This with Mark and Hal. The show that settles the debates nobody else will touch. And today we are flying across the pond. Yeah, we are. To jolly old England. And this is fun, Mark. You have no idea about this. But our guest, the great John Kovalik, is here. He will text me. We'll text back and forth. We'll text about episodes. He's had Mm -hmm. great suggestions over time. We have talked about him coming on. And then eventually, eventually, (laughs) what didn't you say, like, I'm just going to send you these crisps? Because I want you to try them and, and settle this. And it's yes. like, well, you have to come on too. What, the, you were born in England. I was, as you can tell from my accent. I was born in Manchester. Oh, you, you I'm, sound I'm, it. I would have guessed. So th- just, I can barely just, understand that. Yeah. I don't know about this game that you guys had going about these crisps. All I know is that one day I was handed a box of uh, <laughs> British crisps. Yeah. But I do know John uh, because of uh, Dork Tower, obviously. The legendary creator of Dork Tower. And I got super fired up by the board game. Well, there's Apples to Apples. There's Munchkin. There's Cash mm-hmm. and Guns. I've illustrated probably a hundred games. So I'm... it was like a adventure game with a medieval character in it. I saw it in the store. I was so excited. Oh, that's Munchkin. Munchkin. Yeah. Munchkin. Yes. That's Munchkin. Munchkin's yes. groovy, but Apples to Apples, obviously classic. But, uh, and thank you so much for being here. This is very, very cool. And thank you for all of these crisps. <laughs> yes. I mean, they're not mountains, the they're mountains crisps. of them. Yeah, don't call them uh, chips. They're these are crisps. And what do you know about Walkers? What is your relationship to this particular snack treat? Well, Walkers uh, was the main crisp manufacturer when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I grew up in. I was born in Manchester, but mostly raised in Somerset, which is the south uh, west of England. Mm-hmm. Um, n- in the city of Glastonbury, which is now famous for a giant music festival every year, but which to me will always be home of the best fish and chips in Britain, nice fish and chips, which is just fantastic and delightful. But these are, so I picked up these packs, the basic packs of British crisps. These are what, as a schoolboy, you would grab from the newsagent or the corner store. Um, the, Basic flavors are like the central ones, I think, to being British. Um, mm-hmm. you got your cheese and onion, your salt and vinegar, your ready salted prawn cocktail, smoky bacon, roast chicken. Um, there's even the unsalted salt and shake, which comes with its own little packet of salt, which you can salt yourself. Which was uh, an odd one. It's an odd yes. one. I'm not used to it. That was the original that, that the, uh, companies were using even before Smith's was doing that before, uh, they started adding the flavors and pre-salting them, correct? Yes. Yes. It, it saved a huge amounts in mechanization, apparently. I'm not. <laughs> Can I ask a question here? Hi. How, how Loveland crisp times I've had, I mean, I remember like the unsalted wave of the eighties and nineties where like supposed to, stuff's supposed to be healthy, maybe like just pre Olestra. And everything, <laughs> everything unsalted is, is miserable. Maybe mm-hmm. not. Sometimes pretzels are okay, but like after three pretzels that are unsalted, you're like, I'm being pranked. Are you supposed <laughs> yeah. to spit in the bag and then pour the salt in so it sticks? Because as far as I know, like pot- <laughs> pot- chips or crisps, uh, ch- these are potato chips for, for those of you stateside. It's what we would call mm-hmm. them. They're essentially the roofing shingles of food. So in that they are designed to not pick up, like things will bounce off of them. It's like you're throwing rocks yeah. at a shield. 
They're not maybe going to spray, maybe you spray a little Pam on, on there. You see, when I was a kid, so back in the back in the late seventies, when I was in school, mm-hmm. I vaguely remember a marketing push for these salt and shake bags. And the salt and shake at that point was supposed to be a plus. You could add your own salt. My assumption is, and I, I have not picked up a bag of these in almost literally 40 years. Wow. In fact, I was kind of surprised they still made them. Um, but my assumption was always that there's enough grease on the crisps that a certain amount of the salt should in. stick. Um, so the oil, you know, you can spit on them if you want, I suppose. Um, I'm, who am I to, you know, uh, to disparage local customs? Uh, <laughs> But, you know, my, they, I, it, it, it was an odd thing back then, and it honestly is still an odd thing now. And they are still around, which I was a little, again, shocked at. Question for you guys. Uh, sorry, uh, Mark Gagliardi, uh, Crispin Science Monitor. Um, <laughs> the, um, you mentioned earlier the uh, the person that you would buy your crisps from, and you breezed right by it, and it sounded like a spy job from MI6. What did you call that person? News agents. The news agent. Yes, the news agent. It, it's basically a little store where they would have all the newspapers lined up and all the magazines, and then there'd be some treats, uh, some various packets of crisps. Of, okay. of this is like so it's like a newsstand you would see in a big city in the U.S. This is what you saw. But a in, store, in a small store, like a proper store. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. This would okay. be the news <laughs> Ken. Just Ken. Just turn. It's a bodega, Mark. Okay. Put it in a <laughs> Brooklynese for me. Okay. I thought it was somebody trying to get newspapers jobs. Oh, you're going to love this one. It covers finance. Got a great puzzle in it. You want to work with this paper. I don't know. I don't know, Morty. I don't know. Give him a chance. He's been trying to tell the news for 30 years. He's been doing community news for free on weekends. Hey, uh, sorry, John. How Lublin, Crispin Glover Times. I wonder if... If it's fair to say, I don't want to start eliminating these. I haven't even tasted sure. it before I have before me because I gave Mark too many of the bags he sent. I don't know if the roasted chicken. I'm mad about it. <laughs> is it fair to say that a flavor you have not had in 40 years is probably not going to win? Like anything that's self, like I don't like, I don't like my food to make me work. Maybe that's. <laughs> yeah. Um, my assumption is probably I was thinking this would go up against the legendary ready salted, but, okay. um, yeah, the, the salt and shake. Are difficult to find. Uh, mm. They are not in every store. They're certainly not in most of the high street stores that I can tell. You know, you don't. I don't see these in Tesco's. Uh, I don't see them in the Aldi's or the mm. Littles. So yeah, it's probably not. I think you know, if, if you don't actually have one, Hal, you're probably not missing too much. And Mark, here's, if you got two, they're fantastic. Here's the thing: Enjoy. I I did get two. And, uh, I, I, here's what I did. I'm remembering this and look, man, sometimes I don't keep a lot of food in my place and I get hungry and I get the munchies. I did eat both of them. And here's the, here's, and I, I ate them both in sequ- in immediate sequence because okay. I saw the covers or I saw on the front of the bag, it said salt and shake. And I, th- I didn't know if that was just a, you know, a, a sort of cheeky name for a flavor from England. I don't know what, you know, the, how that works over there with language. Um, so <laughs> I opened up this bag of crisps and I ate some of the crisps out of this and I was like, these are terrible. <laughs> these are uh... terrible, unsalted garbage chips. It feels like they didn't thin it. Oh, what's this? Oh, it looks like one of those little pouches of silica gel you find in sneakers. <laughs> well, I'll throw that away. Anyway, these chips are terrible. <laughs> Before realizing that there was a little pouch of salt, and that was what I had thrown away. Think that ex- little blue bag there of salt, is. exactly little that. Thinking oh, yeah. that it was silica gel like yes. you would find in beef jerky or in Nikes. <laughs> and so I immediately did the salt and shook it in and shook it up. And uh I did find how the problem that you assumed you would have had I not eaten both bags, I did have, which was a lot of the salt wound up on the last few crisps. Yeah. The first assume, couple of large ones did not yeah. get the salt. I, I, assume assume a, I just it. opened the salt bag. Okay. The salt little little tiny little, little packet. salt. It looks like a yeah. band aid when you held it. Little up, packet, you know? yeah. Like the world's smallest condom. And the salt crystals are fairly large and they are not coming out easily. No. Yeah, that, I, I noticed that too. You know what that needs? Yeah. One of those little silica gel pouches in there to draw <laughs> the moisture out of it. <laughs> you know what this needs? 
Salt. Salt. Yeah. yeah. Just do it for me, guys. Do it for me. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's coming out. The salt is coming it. out in clumps. So it's, you're clumping it up and then you're supposed to, I assume you. I'm using two hands to get the salt out right now. Pinch it. First, you get Chimney. a toothbrush to get all the salt out of it. And then you close the bag up and you shake it and magically. I mean, the salt has remained at the bottom, and you you just pour the whole bag into your. Well, mouth the salt again. is remaining in the little blue bag. I cannot the get the stuff off. Go anywhere. It oh, doesn't. you're supposed to pour chips in there to. to <laughs> it's happy the in the little bag. It's like okay, so now I'm like I've got salt on my fingers. Mm-hmm. Got, the salt is everywhere except the crisps. They really needed to like once they figured out to pre-salt these things. Yeah, that was the game changer. This Pretty is clearly much. a company trying to save money, like you said. So now yeah. shaking Getting up the bag. Okay. Okay, let's see. I've got grease and salt on my fingers, and I haven't even had a chip yet. Chris, sorry. Pardon for the <laughs> eating sounds. <laughs> there's not a lot of salt in these. Yeah, they, yeah. It's, it's really is there's a lot of user error possible yeah. in this version. Now, I have a question. This is like the Windows 8 of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> right. I do like uh, are, does the, the these bags imply. By the way, I just want to walk yes. people through the back of these bags. Here's what it says: this is, a, this is the little Walker story. When you look at a potato, what do you see? Probably just a potato, right? Well, in 1948, Henry Walker saw potential. Ooh. <laughs> With a bite of positivity, he turned his humble spuds into irresistible Walker's crisps. Now, this would imply that in 1948, Henry Walker invented the crisp. <laughs> it does this seem feels, to imply that. This feels apocryphal. I feel like these existed in some form, maybe in other countries, maybe even in the same country somewhere else. But mm. I do appreciate, like, this, you know, previously potatoes were just eaten like apples, but Henry Walker <laughs> figured out if you take a knife to them, you can make them smaller and then let other people put salt on them for you, like your Tom Sawyer. But a bag of chips. <laughs> he was the Johnny Appleseed of crisps. <laughs> he was. Yeah, that does seem to gloss over a lot of history. Uh. <laughs> well, it, it's, I'm curious about the history of this too, because looking at Smith's crisps, it looks as if Smith's was doing this as early as 1913. Smith's Oops. was doing this. Yep. And they were the first ones to have the little blue sach- sachet, 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 chantay of salt in the bag of crisps. I wonder if it was before they started pre-salting them that Walkers did it this way, or if they added this version later, this salt and shake version as a reply to Smith's. Do you know? Well, right now, both of these are manufactured by Walkers. So the original Smith's Salt and Shake has got its own story on the mm-hmm. back of the packet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would seem to contradict the story on the back of the Walker's packet. Ah. Right. So the pa- wait, so the packaging of the Salt and Shake that you have is, it does say Smith's Salt and Shake. Yes, it says I don't origin- know anymore because originally. I threw them away after I ate both mine and Hal's. Yes, and one of your sponsors is a microdose uh, uh, supplier, isn't it? I seem <laughs> <Yeah>. to remember. <laughs> uh, are those related thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, talking about the munchies. Salt and Shake. Frank Smith sold one of Britain's first crisps. To the pubs of Cricklewood in North London in the 1920s. Cricklewood? Cricklewood. Oh, Cricklewood. That is yes. That's perfect. Dickens made that neighborhood up. Super British. No, it's it's uh, Cricklewood is um, it's funny even in Britain actually. The goodies, yeah. the old comedy trio, the goodies used to make many Cricklewood jokes. Um, in fact, they've got a song, Cricklewood. The salt cellars he provided vanished as fast as the crisps! Exclamation mark. The little blue twist of salt in every pack was the ingenious solution. Add as little or as much as you like and give the pack a shake. (laughs) Add as little or as much as you like. You do it yourself. Sounds like if Hilton was like, hey, you know what? Here's a vacuum. You get your room as clean or as not clean as you like. See, isn't this fun? It is also very Dickensian. You can sleep. You can sleep on the floor. Here are all the materials you need to make a bed. Yeah. <laughs> well, you ha- is it? Doesn't this sound fun? Make it your way. Yeah. It's you a, know, it's as a tour <laughs> that's disguised as a choice. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. I will say, honestly, there's not a lot of salt. That's six of these. Sure, most of it remains in the sachet, but it's actually kind of nice having less salt on these. It's actually yeah. once you actually figure out how to do it, which I should have done forty years ago. 
Um, these are not unpleasant. They're very lightly salted, not out of you know preference, simply because the dang salt does not come out of the blue sachet. Yeah. yeah. Um, Shante. Should we jump over to the now 1948 official first Walker's chip, the yes. lightly salted? And how you have this one, yes? Or ready, ready salted. salted. Sorry. Ready Legendary salted. ready salted. Leg- this legendary ready like salted. A, this should taste like a, a standard chip slash crisp, is, would be my expectation. That this will taste like a Lay's potato crisp. chip for good reason, because Lay's potato yes. chips purchased Walker's in 1989. That's right. Yes. Yes. All right, I'm going in. Mm. Honestly, it's mm-hmm. a potato chip. To me, this it's like is, a summer barbecue. It does, but does it seem okay. like there's less salt than the average Lay's in the U.S.? Yes, but I wonder if that is a cultural difference or Most, just a brand difference. You know what I mean? Or simply, <laughs> they couldn't get the industrial little blue sachets to yeah, fill right. all, they the, open, dump all yeah. the salt in. Yeah, there's one guy whose job is like, you're on sachet duty, homie. Yeah, <laughs> uh, man. I'm sorry. You're on sachet duty. Bloody hell, gov. Not again. I cannot do an English accent. I cannot do an English accent unless You're I get really there. drunk. Come I know. On, John. I don't. I cannot do an accent of any place I've been. I can maybe do Wisconsin if you, uh, but I've been here long enough and I fight against it. Well, wait until we open up the cheese curds flavor yeah. bag. <laughs> exactly. My child can do a much better English accent than I can. But, you know, if I've got, you know, like four or five gin and tonics in me, it just all comes out. The accent and the gin and tonics and whatever crisps I've Yeah, four, four or five gin and tonics, something's coming out of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have, the, I have four of the other five flavors here. But this yeah. is okay. a standard potato chip. This is, but, yeah, this is. less less salted. Yeah. This is a crisp. This is the standard it's a crisp. crisp it's flavor. less salty than the standard U.S. I mean, the, the, everything in the U.S. is when my sister, uh, my parents still live in London. My sister is a surgeon in Brighton. Uh, when she comes over, she's got a real tough time with the food over here because everything is so heavily salted. Right. That's usually her first comment on just about anything. Here are the other flavors, which you should have, Hal. Mm. Everything but chicken. I have everything but chicken. Yes. We've got uh, the two classic British flavors, cheese and onion and salt and vinegar. Yes. Yeah. I'll throw a couple more little history bits in there for you. Gotta love the snack manufacturers because when in the 1950s, in 1952, two guys won a Nobel Prize for the invention of the partition chromatograph chemistry tool. What did the chip manufacturers immediately do? Within five years, they had used that bit of science. Nobel Prize winning science to create powder to put on chips. Or Chris, Ooh. I'm gonna keep. I sh- I'm gonna keep saying chips in this episode, and yeah. probably I'm gonna have to put a quarter wah, in the wah, crisp wah, jar. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Did you just womp womp me to the queen? Yes, the king. Sorry, the king. Now, God bless right. the king, Charles the Third. Charles. So the yeah, let's jump on to. So in 1950. Oh no, it wasn't even five years. Two years after this was invented. Uh, Walkers began selling cheese and onion flavored crisps to yes. mimic the famous English plowman's lunch. What is a plowman's lunch? Okay, a plowman's lunch is utterly delicious. Um, it's it's it, there are variables in each and every one. Usually, it's a chunk of cheese, mm-hmm. a good uh, uh, cheddar, for example, or uh, double Gloucester, Red Leicester uh, mm-hmm. cheese with a lot of flavor. There'll be some a uh, pickle. Uh, Branson pickle, which is a vinegary sweet. Um, I believe it's, uh, beets and turnips are the primary pickle ingredients. Uh, there's going to be Man. somebody yelling at me on the internet right now. Uh, but I love the stuff so much. It is, it's, it's got its own very savory, sweet, sour flavor to it. There'll be, uh, fresh vegetables, tomatoes, lettuce. Pickled onions, uh, quite possibly, which in Britain are very different from pickled onions in the U.S. or in France. Uh, they've got much more of the malt vinegar bite to them. Okay. Um, and then possibly a cold bit of pie, something like uh, Melton Mowbray, Mowbray pork pie, uh, something along those lines. So, you know, essentially it, it can encompass many things. But, yeah, right. you've got the cheese and you've got the onion and the pickle and that to me is what you build a plowman's lunch around. Are we going to find some of the pickle flavor in this? I know it's cheese and onion is the flavor. Do we yes. have a little bit of the pickle in there as well? Because I know like there are certain flavors that stand out. Like when Lay's introduced their cheeseburger flavor, it was really just pickle and ketchup flavor. 
but yes. that combo for some reason makes your brain think you're eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> um, there, uh, to me, cheese and onion is a very different flavor from the basic. Uh, what's what's the equivalent in the U.S.? The there's an oniony flavor, which is there's a sour cream and onion. There's sour cream and onion. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I um, mean, this is a very different flavor to me. Cheese and onion is a very is a unique British flavor. You get some of the cheese. I could not tell you what kind of cheese it was. Uh, you get some of the onion. I, I think it's a delightful combination. And I've not found any chips or crisps like it any place else in the world. All right, should we dive in? Yeah. Sure. We open. I'm going to open the bag now. Okay. I'm going to smell inside the crisp bag. Yeah. You never want to smell inside the bag. Yeah, it smells like a... It smells mild. It's a mild... First, I thought it smelled like a it's, sock, but it's... Uh, oh, it's it cheese and onion. Pleasant. It's a mild, pleasant... <laughs> it's a pleasant sock. Says more sock sock smell, how cheese and onion... <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I shouldn't be podcasting. All right, I'm going to try. So to me, this is a taste from childhood. I mean, this is really one of those quintessential British flavors. It's a little more onion than cheese. I'm going to... Say so I've never actually analyzed the flavor before, but the onion is a little bit heavier than the cheese. They're both really mild, though. I guess yes. I'm so used to like oversprayed American flavor blasts. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's got subtle notes, and I really like it. I picked up the cheese. Well, like first. they still look like potato chips. Sorry, <laughs> I picked up the cheese first, then a little bit of the onion. I tried like three of them. Mm -hmm. It was a similar flavor, even though they were all like one's thicker, one's thinner. But it is really pl – I can see how if this is something you had as a kid that it would take you right back. It is really – I like it a lot. It's really, really good. I wasn't sure. I like both cheese and onion, but I wouldn't – this isn't a flavor I would pick out right. were I to go into a news agent. Mm -hmm. But yes. yeah, <laughs> very good. He, I, I, am, I did not know that it was supposed to mimic a uh, plowman's lunch. And so yeah. I find that a little impressive, to be honest. Yeah. Well, their next major offering was also based on a classic British meal, and that was in 1967, on the heels of Tato, I think, or I think Tato did it first, but they, the Irish crisp, the company. Irish crisp, uh, with the salt and vinegar, uh, mm -hmm. based on the fish and chips. And we will talk about that in just a couple of minutes. But first, we're going to take a quick break. We Got This with Mark and Hal is brought to you on the Maximum Fun Network by the members of Maximum Fun. To them, we say thank you. And if you would like to become a member, visit MaximumFun.org slash join. So let's take a couple minutes and we're going to hear about some of the other shows on the Max Fun Network. And when we come back, we will dive into the salt and vinegar chips. Crisps! <laughs> <laughs> Security free beef and dairy all day. Max Fun Drive. Hey, chef, we got another one. Another Max Fun Drive. People know it's the best time to support the shows they love. You tell them I'll meet up days back? Sure did. They wanted to know about the live streams, though. Those are finishing up right now. We can even send one out on the first night, March 20th. March 20th, chef! I'll give them a heads up. Uh, they also wanted the limited time thank you gifts for new and upgrading members. Yep, and we got some fresh episodes ready to go, too. All right, we got exciting live streams, meetup day, fresh episodes, limited time gifts. Oh, and Boko! Yeah, um, okay, let them know that Max Fun Drive 2023 will be ready on um, March 20th, and it'll only be two weeks. Two weeks, chef! Max Fun Drive starts on March 20th for just two weeks. No problem. Order up! Shoot, I forgot their water. And now, a live reading from Rachel's Poetry Corner. Elephants Theremin's Clifton, Neopets Poorstrips Jepson, Pine Smell Jelly Beans Goalie Goals, Skittles Squirrels and the Mole, Celery Chopsticks Pumpernickel, A Case of You by Joni Mitchell, Lullabies Tie-Dye The More You Know, all of these things on our wonderful show. All of these things and more wait for you on Wonderful every Wednesday on MaximumFun.org or wherever you download podcasts. All right, let's open the salt and vinegar and try it. Here we go. Opening the salt okay. and vinegar. All right. This is now of the major flavors of crisps from Walker's. Oh. Uh, the main three, would you say, are ready salted, cheese and onion, and salt and vinegar? Probably. I mean, there's prob possibly going to be some folks who say prawn cocktail mm -hmm. goes in amongst them now. Okay. 
But to me, those three would be it. I wonder if it also comes from the times that they were released, because these are some of the oldest. 1954, this was 1967, and then Prawn yeah. Cocktail and uh, Roast Chicken, which we'll talk about later, came along in the 70s. This, but let's dive into these. This one's I'm opening the bag. Feet. I'm, it made me throw up almost. I smelled it a bunch of times just to be like, is it really? <laughs> is it? Is it? <laughs> I, like, I Hal, couldn't. you're going to pass out if you keep your face buried in a bag. I, what are, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the horse of eating crisps. <laughs> Oh, that's malt vinegar. Obviously, you're going to get a strong malt vinegar. Yep. And barely any salt. Mm-hmm. But again, it's, 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 the, the British crisps overall do seem to be much more lightly salted. I love how American mild crisps. they are. I really do. I like that a lot. You know, that's mild. a very good point because you can get salt and vinegar Pringles here in the States and they are yep. sharp. Yes. Yeah. It's like eating, yes. it's like the, it's like a salty version of Sour Patch Kids. Like they just, yes. <laughs> they pucker you up really tight. Yeah. But I would say even, you know, I, I see how wincing they're over mm-hmm. the zoo. I like it. Not your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. Here's the funny thing. Mm. So in Britain, like many countries over the last couple of decades, walkers will release novelty flavors. Sure. Mm-hmm. One World Cup 12 years ago or so. They had like a dozen different flavors. And I think one of them was roadkill, uh, roadkill possum or something like that. Or maybe it was possum flavor for the U.S. team. Uh, wow. <laughs> but, um, the last couple of trips I've had over to visit my family, there haven't been any of these novelty flavors. But last summer when I was there, Walker's released a uh, taste icon line supporting local restaurants. And surprisingly, one of the best flavors for Britain was their chicken burrito flavor, really? which was actually a very subtle and very well done. But the worst of the four flavors they had was their fish and chip flavor, which to me tasted like an off-brand, incredibly mild salt and vinegar. I mean, you just yeah. got no fish out of this at all. Do you want just- fish out of that, though? Like, do you if you look at a, ba- a bunch of different bags of crisps and you're like, the one I'm going to pick is fish. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, we do have prawn in Thailand and in China. I mean, I, I, I love junk food from all over the world Mm -hmm. and they are not shy about their fish flavors there. And again, it's Mm -hmm. uh, walkers, not walkers, lays, you know, is you'll go into an Asian market and you'll see these potato chips from China, from Thailand. And if you get one of their fish flavors, cuttlefish, crab, pickled fish, they are not subtle about yeah, it. At I all. guess so I have had like crab and I've had prawn before. I, I just think fish, I think like flounder, yeah. like a big fillet of a piece of fish. Like in my brain, it's Heathcliff with the cloche on top of the <laughs> bones. Yeah. And the basic British chippy is going to be cod or haddock or place. Right. You know, cod and haddock being very meaty, uh, fish. And I think you could get away with that in a crisp, but if something is called fish and chips, yeah, I'm kind of looking yeah. for something more than just a off-brand salt and vinegar flavor. Yeah. Well, what do we think of this salt and vinegar flavor? How does it I'm stack a fan. Up? I mean, I, I know how winced, but again, to me, like this it. is a taste of childhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mild flavors feel like every bag of chip, every bag of crisps is say, like, terribly sorry. I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. Would you like a small, a scotch of salt? Do you not <laughs> like it because oh, it's... Vinegar? Do you, like, no, do you I, not like it because it's too mild or is I'm it not too malted, strong? I'm not a malted vinegar guy. I ah, understand gotcha. it. I do understand mm-hmm. it. I don't mm-hmm. mind it in a mild sense, but I also like if I got fish and chips, I'd probably do salt and maybe just eat it that way. Or like maybe, maybe I'd put a little bit on. I wouldn't be like, yeah. oh, like, uh, okay, you see, not like I, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to. That's when I was, do. you have done every chimney sweep from that scene, haven't you? <laughs> You've, you're just working your way down the line of chimney sweeps from step in time. <laughs> I'm going to start moving into the Beatles suit. Oh, there are all these crisps or crackles to try. See, I remember my first year of university at uh, Queen Mary College, London, mm. and I lived with my friends way out on the far, far west side, a place called Northolt, uh, way, way, way down the uh, central line and you got off 
at Northolt, uh, this little, very British suburban row houses, everything like that. And there was a chippy, and it was a long walk to our house from the tube stop. And I would stop at this chippy. At the time, I think a bag of chips was like 50 pence, 60 pence. And I would load these up with salt, and then I would put so much malt vinegar on them, I would have to rip a little hole in the bottom of the bag so that the excess could drain off. Wow. That is that is the, you know, if you go to a chippy and they ask, do you want salt and vinegar on it? And they put it on, you'll just get a couple of shakes of vinegar, mm-hmm. most. And this will only be the top few chips. And so, no, you got to, like, soak these things. They've got to, you got to drown them. They've got to be, like, Titanic level victims. I don't know. Uh, I got to I gotta say, I, I appreciate that. I'm not a wet snack food guy. Yeah. I also I, don't put the popcorn on at the movie theater because I or put the butter on the popcorn at the movie theater. Then like it's just I, it's a wet it's my snack is now wet. I might as well yeah, pull a pour also, a bowl of cereal, pour milk on it, and then eat it with my hands. But possibly, butter. but British chips are pretty soft and soggy to begin with. They're not like American yeah, yeah. French fries. These are gonna be very thick cut things. Yeah. Uh, they've only been fried once. So you don't get the double fry crispiness yeah, like on that. the outside. Gotcha. Um, for the most part, some places do, but uh, your average chippy, I, I don't believe, uh, is going to go into that level. And yeah, you get them. They've been under a heat lamp for the most part. So they're a little soggy to begin <laughs> with. And yeah. you know, I know I'm upselling. British cuisine here. Yeah, really. Um, <laughs> I look, you're selling come, past the clothes, though. I enjoy a good fish and chips. Come for the vinegar, stay for the sog. Well, let's jump forward a little bit. Sure. So now we've got we've got a few thoughts on the the cheese and onion, and a few thoughts on the salt and vinegar, both based on uh, classic British dishes. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to move on to a classic British dinner from the 1970s, popularized in the 1970s. For our appetizer, we're going to have a chilled prawn cocktail. And then for Mm. our main course, we'll be having a crispy roast chicken, a la Walker's. Uh, Crispy uh, being the actual word written in slight cursive on the bag. So uh, you want to start with the... What is it? The supreme Supreme prawn cocktail. prawn cocktail. Does that mean it has sour cream and tomatoes? Mm, you know, I think it means uh, Diana Ross really loves these. I like that. <laughs> um, oh, but like no, that I've smell. never seen Supreme uh, growing up over there. They're bursting with more flavor, according oh. to the bag. You don't like that, Hal? I don't like the smell. <laughs> it's, ve- it's very prawny. The smell it's... is very prawny. I'm going to hold on. I don't want to <laughs> try these. I know they're not going to taste like they smell, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at it. what's going on here. Okay, it kind of tastes so, like ketchup farted. Prawn, well, actually, which is not bad. Um, you know, for in Britain, a prawn cocktail is going to be very different from an American shrimp cocktail. It's not horseradish based. It's very mayonnaise based. So to me, oh, interesting. So the cocktail sauce is what's what is in the cocktail sauce? Because here it's uh, or in California and United States, it's uh, horseradish sauce, horseradish and uh, ketchup. So there, okay. it's, it's mayo based, or it's 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 um I've, I've got to look this up right now to be honest. But to me, my memory is it's essentially a mayonnaise ketchupy kind of thing. Okay, like a remoulade. No, yeah, with no um no horseradish bite to it. Gotcha. Um, so to me, prawn cocktail crisps and these the first time I remember being in school again in the late seventies trying prawn cocktail for the first time. It was not in crisp form. It was another British snack food called skips, mm-hmm. which are these little puffed wheat, I think, possibly corn, <laughs> um, things which look a tiny little bit like shells, mm-hmm. but they've got a very different texture. And to me, uh, I think I will always associate prawn cocktail flavor with that texture. So having it in crisp form is not unpleasant, uh, yeah. but it is just a, a little bit odd because I've, again, we, my, my, this is going to sound very, either very British or very weird, but my lunch hour at uh, Millfield in Somerset, our school, my friends and I would go upstairs uh, to the essentially restroom. Oh, not restroom. That's sorry. The break room and play the card game whist using these prawn cocktail snacks as chips. So literally, you know, using skips as chips, uh, but playing whist. In so it. It That is the most British couple of sentences I've <laughs> ever heard. <laughs> Yeah, really. Oh. Well, playing whist with crisps and chips and 
<laughs> anyway, I, 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 I do wish I had not lost my accent at this point. It would be so much more impressive if I had said that. And- I mean, how long did you live? It's, I'm impressed that you have lost your accent because you, how long did you live in England before? <sighs> well, you- I, we, okay, so I was born in Manchester mm-hmm. and we, my parents moved back to the States when I was two. But then we moved back to the UK when I was nine. Gotcha. So I was in the UK from nine to about 21. Okay. And but your parents are American. My parents are actually both. We're all dual citizens at this mm-hmm. point. But yes, my parents originally came from Western Pennsylvania, Johnstown, gotcha. Pennsylvania, just uh, Johnstown itself and a little place called Bosworth, uh, Boswell, just outside of Johnstown. Um, but my mom now speaks with a very British accent. My sister, yeah. who was born in Cumberland, Maryland, we moved over to the UK, back to the UK when she was one. And so mm. she now talks with a very Southern British accent, yeah. combination of London and Brighton. Well, it doesn't take long to get a British accent. If you, uh, any American college student that goes for three days comes back with a British <laughs> accent, it's just a matter of how long it lasts once they yes. get back. Yes. If I'm there for about a month, I will mm-hmm. find the accent unintentionally coming back. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll start slipping into the right. Right, yeah, yeah, right. But it takes about four weeks for it yeah. to fully, you know, four to eight weeks for it to come back in any significant way. And the British diphthongs arrive first. They're the vanguard of uh, they the, the dialect, sure. <laughs> no one expects them. Uh, where are we going next? Are we going to go? Shall we check out the crispy roast chicken? Wait, yes, let's do that. Because I just want to say something real mm-hmm. quick. I, we don't curse on this podcast, but Johnny, are you f***ing with me with this flavor? That this exists? <laughs> this is, Which this one? Is, Prawn cocktail? Absolutely. This is, this is very, um, this just feels like I'm going to be honest here because you're my friend and I owe that to you. It <laughs> tastes like when you throw up what it tastes like <laughs> in your mouth afterwards, that, like acidic, like this feels bad and anything I ate, like all the ghosts of food past have come to haunt me. That is what that flavor tasted like to me. <laughs> that well, feels like hyperbole. I know. I'm being. I'm being specific. There's a. I difference. saw the look on your face when you tried this out. Here is, by the way, I just looked up the Sainsbury's classic prawn cocktail recipe. It is four parts mayonnaise, one part ketchup, two hundred wow. grams mayonnaise, fifty grams ketchup, one tablespoon Worcestershire sauce, <laughs> one teaspoon lime juice, and a large pinch of paprika. Okay, and some avocado. <laughs> so here for me. The interesting some I mean, the avocados thing about- threw that in at the end, like they threw some California in there. Well, yeah, it's, it's it's I don't remember that, but then of course when I was a kid, I'm not sure I would have known how to recognize an avocado. That's fair, um, sure. especially growing up in the UK. But uh, so to me, prawn cocktail occupies that kind of evolutionary <laughs> niche which barbecue flavor does in the US, or yeah. tomato ketchup flavor does in Canada. It's a basic tomato flavor. Mm-hmm. And honestly, if you had called these barbecue flavor, Hal, I think you would have enjoyed them more. And if not that I would have felt from- doubly deceived. <laughs> Hal, Hal, watching you, like watching you physically, uh, eat, <laughs> watching you physically try to eat these prawn cocktail crisps is hilarious. Well, the smell <laughs> grabbed me. Yeah. It does. And- that smell does kick you in the, kick you in the groin when it gets you. Here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Mm. I never, never once in my life, apart from now, have I ever opened a packet of crisps and smelt them before eating them. No, I didn't just bury your face in there and go to town. Yeah. You eat with mm. all your senses, your eyes, oh. you eat with your sense of smell, the sound Isn't of it. it? Mm. Now, um, I don't have the roasted chicken. Is that was that what you're going to try next? The roast chicken is going to be next. Okay, yeah. I'm going to let you eat it. Right. Uh, there are two bags of it there, right? Uh, I only have one bag of this here. I oh, guess. then only one mate. Okay, good. All right. Only That's, one mate. Yeah. Only one mate. Two bags entered, one two, bag left. There were two before the gummies came. All right. I'm <laughs> going in for crispy roast chicken. Crispy roast chicken came out around the same time as prawn cocktail yeah. uh, to mirror Sunday dinner, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's my assumption. Um, no. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> what does it smell like? <laughs> it. It real. What's fu- here's what's funny about it. Smells this. like Empire Hal. It, it it's <laughs> like it's really really odd. I've not tasted one yet. This is just off of smell, and this one of all of them was the one that punched me in the face the hardest, smell wise. Mm. 
because I'm so used to things that are chicken flavored here, like chicken flavored ramen or chicken in a biscuit or any of those, like any of those things. It's really just that sort of chicken bouillon flavor, right? That yellow, it's a, it's the yellow powder flavor. I opened up this bag and smelled it. It legit smells like a full on roasted chicken. Okay. Like it is jarring. I like it. Yeah. I'm a fan so far of that because as far as accuracy goes, so far, this is the one that is the most accurate. It literally smelled like a roast chicken when I opened the bag. I'm so jealous. It tastes like a roast chicken. Willy it Wonka. does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll trade you. We're not, we don't live that far from another. I'll bring you this prawn cocktail bag I opened. <laughs> okay. I'll leave the, I will keep the rest, I will leave the rest of these for you. They're really, really good. Yeah. And it also, you can also taste like the gravy on the chicken. Like there's a little bit of like the, uh, like that sort of light. I don't know. Do Brits do gravy on chicken or like, like the gravy you put on turkey? Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's got a little bit of that flavor too. Yeah. Um, see, one of the odd things is to me, uh, British stuffing is always, is very different from mm-hmm. U.S. stuffing. It's a huge, uh, the overpowering flavor of sage in the stuffing. Oh, yeah. But yeah, there, there'll be, there'll be gravy, uh, you know, for a Sunday, uh, lunch or, whatever uh roast potatoes which are phenomenal oh my gosh if you've never had proper british roasties they are fantastic yeah. chicken stuffing um you know, the works yeah i i mean to me i like these i again i've not had these for about 40 years so these come in walkers sells two giant uh, well, you can get them in 12 24 or 44 packet uh bags or mm-hmm. Boxes in the case of the 22 and 44s, but they will have the basic flavors, which will be prawn cocktail, salt and vinegar, cheese and onion, ready salted. And then they will do the meaty flavors, which are the roast chicken, the smoky bacon, oddly enough, the cheese and onion again. Mm-hmm. And I forget what the fourth flavor is. Smoky bacon, roast chicken. I'm just going to look this up quickly because, um, if, if it was a different flavor, it would be. This is a, here. this is an all meat collection. It's an old meat collection, although there's no meat in the cheese and onion. Yeah, these are all uh, But the cheese and onion is thrown in there. These are all, um, these are, even the bacon one is vegetarian. They're all vegetarian it? chips, by the way. I'll say, here's a thing that, that – one of the things that I think make the – so far, these are my favorite because they have the most flavor. They have the most specific flavor. And I'm reading the back of it, the ingredients in the uh, roast chicken. Most of these have flavorings, just generic – with a U, generic flavorings as an ingredient. Yeah. This mm. one has flavorings as an ingredient, yes, but it also has onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and in its own, in their own separate sections, sage and rosemary. So they really, they load it up. It's interesting you mentioned that sage was such a huge thing yeah. in the stuffing. That That's a thing that these chips, they went all out on the accuracy and the spicing of these. I'm sorry and that the, you don't have a bag of these in front of you, Hal. And the allergy Fine. advice... It may contain milkweed, gluten, barley, soya, celery, and mustard. Yeah. Mm. Do people have an allergic reaction to celery? Apparently. Um, Maybe like British people do like their food mild, don't they? Uh, please, no <laughs> celery. My God, my stomach can't take that yeah. much flavor. No, if you've the... ever had if you've ever had a vindaloo curry in a oh, back yeah. street in London at midnight, uh you would know that that is a falsehood, sir. Sitter. Uh, listen, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, a question from the back. Mark Gagliardi from uh, Ruth's Crisps Newshouse. Do you think that Britain's reputation for under-seasoning food, uh, the, the curry aside, because there is great <laughs> Indian food yes. all over, do you think that is part of why these are so much milder? And what do you think they were doing with something like the roast chicken? To It's such a drastic difference to me as far as like the amount of, of seasoning that's going on to those versus the rest of them that we've had so far. Uh, honestly, I think British cuisine in the last 20 or 30 years mm-hmm. has evolved so quickly, you know, in part because of this giant, like London is this beautiful multicultural city. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents live about a mile from Borough Market in Southwark. And you take a water through borough and you've got these amazing foods, even the basic British foods, the roasts, the potatoes. It's really uh, an amazing place to eat. I mean, I would say, yes, these flavors 
are very mild compared to what you might expect from a bag of Doritos Extreme um, or something yeah. of that nature. But I also, you know, I mean, going through these, the flavors are very real in these all. Yeah. Yeah, you it's know, not you're not getting you're not getting uh it's not written in lightning bolts like some of yeah, ours are. Right. I mean, there've been some really good. I mean, there've been some really uh, phenomenally good um American potato uh chip flavors. I remember mm -hmm. there was a taco flavor a couple of years ago which you could actually taste the lettuce in. Uh, you know, it was like, okay, that's really impressive getting to that level of detail in the yeah. flavor. That's uh there's a British like a couple of my favorite crisps from the last few years in Britain though. There was a hot dog flavor, which came out, I think it was 2022. And I'm down to my last bag and I'm, I'm just like working my way slowly through it because it really tastes <laughs> like a hot dog. Wow. And at some point you got to ask, well, why not just eat a hot dog? Um, but the answer one is of my, it's not potatoes also. Yeah, yeah. My, one of my favorite flavors in the entire world comes from China and it's a cucumber flavored potato chip. And it tastes like cucumber. It's a little bit sweeter than a cucumber would be to give it some interest, but it really tastes phenomenally like cucumber. If you ever see this in an Asian market, you've got to grab it because you got to go, Oh my gosh, this potato chip tastes like a freaking cucumber. Nothing this will make me really feel like I am cheating on my health plan <laughs> than to go. I could use a cucumber right now. Where are those cucumber flavored crisps? Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really, I'm learning two things from this experience so far number one <laughs> is that i have the least adventurous palate ever <laughs> that i, mean, is, we, I can we attest established that i like what i like but i'm willing yeah. to try yeah. a lot of things yes I, but i the last flavor i have in my mouth because i didn't have roast chicken is that bag of vomit that i ate so <laughs> i would love to get to our final flavor which is the smoky bacon yeah. Well, technically, there's also pickled. Do you have a pickled onion, Mark? Did I say? I do have a pickled onion? onion. Okay. Oh Lord. Okay. You want? So let's go for pickled onion one real first. quick. All right, we're gonna yeah. hit pickled onion real quick. While we're opening these up and trying pickled onion, I have a trivia question for you. Go From ahead. raw potato uh -huh. to uh, since I'll be chewing this and how you can talk through this like yes. a, I'm gonna uh, answer. Oh, are you? At, is this my trivia question to try? This to is answer? your trivia question to okay, answer I'll while work, we are I'll chewing. I'll work through it while you two eat. That's the question. Uh, how long? From raw potato to bagged crisp, what is the amount of time? How long does at it the take? Walker's factory? I'm going to say 11 okay. minutes. I'm going to say it takes about 11 minutes to do it because I think you do it. It goes through the fryer. It's done. This feels these don't feel like they're going for super crispy. It's just get it done. Then you know for the they put the vomit on this one and then it goes <laughs> through into the bag and they're like this is going to be fun for parties. No one will actually eat. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to guess 25 minutes. 25 minutes. John, you are closer. 35 minutes from oh. raw potato. That's what blew my yeah. mind. Raw. I guess they're going thin slice. They don't have to cook forever. Yeah. But yeah, raw potato to bagged and out the door. Let's talk about pickled onion. Yes. I think that pickled, for me, this is for me personally, pickled onion, it both benefits from and suffers from a similar thing that the crispy roast chicken had, which is. These are get, now as we're eating these, they're getting more and more flavor to them mm -hmm. as we're modernizing and getting closer to contemporary flavors, I guess. And maybe that maybe the palate has changed. Maybe that's changed. These puckering pickled onions in the same way that the roast chicken does to their credit, they taste exactly like pickled onions, but also to their detriment. I do not <laughs> like pickled onions. Well, these also taste like very British pickled onions. It's mm -hmm, the malt yeah. vinegar. So how yeah. would be doubled over in pain right now if you had yeah, Oh, how you would yeah. hate these. Because these are, this is a very malty British pickled onion. The kind you'd get, I'm going to, you know, dating myself here, there would be 10 pence back in the day. They'd have a large jar of them at the chippy. You could just mm -hmm. get an extra one thrown in or at the, at the pub or something like that. This is also interesting because to me, pickled onion, is not a crisp flavor. It's another British snack food called Monster Munch was the first time, which is a big puffed corn mm. snack. And Monster Munch came out with a roast beef flavor and a pickled onion flavor back in the late 1970s. Yeah, I was still in school. It was before I went to college. Mm -hmm. And I loved them. I especially loved the pickled onion flavor. So it's very weird because the flavor and the texture to me don't match up on this one just because I love the Monster Munch pickled onion yeah. so much. So that Monster Munch pickled onion came first, and then this 
I mean, there is something delightfully and horrifyingly British about walkers just kind of going around and co-opting other chip cultures and uh, making them their own. Uh, and it seems like they did that with pickled onion. It's basically what Lays has done around the world, buying up yeah. all of these. Like I was in Russia, in Siberia, 15 years ago, and got a little, found a little store where they're selling a crab flavored potato chip with the Lays logo on it. Yeah. Well, so, listen, these, uh, I don't know. I've never had the puffed version of the yes. pickled onion, but these are, they are exactly what they promise to be on the back. Yes. yes. They are. These they are, taste like, they taste like pickled onions. These are about as powerful as the uh, salt and vinegar Pringles here in the States. It's yeah. a very in your face flavor. There's no subtlety to it. You no. do get the pickle, you do uh, the pickled onion in particular. I mean, this is a very, again, a very true flavor. Mm hmm. Definitely not, you know, a classic flavor to me for a crisp, but, you know, be that as it may. Now, the one thing I will just want to throw in here, my football club, mm -hmm. Leicester City, for a while, we lived in the Midlands up in Rutland, and my dad would take us to Leicester City games. Mm -hmm. And for a while, Leicester City was sponsored by Walkers. Well, Leicester's it, the home of Walkers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And to this day, it kills me that I never bought a Leicester City jersey with the Walkers oh. logo on the front. Oh, um, man. Speaking of things that are delightfully British. Yes. Yes. Only, only. All right. Shall we jump from things that are delightfully British to things that feel almost American? Because we're yeah. the ones that cornered the market on making everything taste like bacon. <laughs> uh, this is well, smoky bacon. Sizzling smoky bacon. smoky bacon. So British bacon. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am sniffing these first. You you people yeah. have turned me into a monster. Oh, that smells good. Thick, thick it fatty does. bacon. Yeah. Yes. Thicker, fattier bacon. It's now, British bacon, though, is very different from American bacon. It's it's a different cut of meat. It's um it's not smoky uh, necessarily. So you know what this smells like to me? Hmm. This smells like bacos. Guess what it tastes like? Bacos. Yeah. yeah. It is. The bacos kid. But it's very... It, the smell is stronger than the taste. Mm -hmm. Again, I've oh, not had this particular flavor in about 40 years. But this is this is a more powerful flavor mm -hmm. than the roast chicken. Definitely. And the cheese and onion. That's good. This is kind of up there with the pickled onion as far as just in-your-face flavor on the mommy bomb. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, umami bomb is a perfect way to put it because that smokiness and mm -hmm. that... Like, that's one of those things that we figured out how to do well mm -hmm. is... Uh, is smoke. I wonder if, if this uses, now I'm taking a look on this to see smoky bacon seasoning. All right. Have you guys ever, uh, used, have you ever cooked with liquid smoke? Yes. Yes. It almost tastes like that, you know, that sort of, which I, which I found out the way that they make liquid smoke is it's the, it's basically double boilers and it's the condensation yeah. on the outside of something that's actually being smoked. So it's not an artificial flavor. Right. It's being, no, no. it's just smoke being distilled. Yeah, if if you've got, you know, if you don't have time to or the space to put up a smoker outside, mm -hmm. there's no shame in liquid smoke. It can be a delightful addition to ribs that you make in the oven. Mm -hmm. And this has the right amount of smoke to it. What do you think, Hal? Uh, it's decent. I like it. Mm -hmm. A little weak. It's you smoky. It's a weak? The, again, the scent is better. The reason why it tastes like bacon and why it has that bacon is has like a liquid smoke aspect to it. Mm -hmm. If you've ever used liquid smoke, if you're if you're if you don't have a smoker, you can add a little liquid smoke to something. It will give it a smoky flavor. Yeah, it's not this. It's no substitute for the smoking process. I want to be clear for all the barbecue enthusiasts out there. Right. Yeah. But, we don't want Gertler coming after us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, for what it is, it's fine. I just uh, it's good, not great. That's what I'd say yeah. about it. The most uh, disturbing thing to me about these is the spelling of smoky. S M O K Y. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up in East Tennessee and that's how we spell the mountains is there. It? So okay. I'm so used to seeing smoky without the E is because it doesn't have the E. I, yeah. 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 But you hear, I'm that's just bear specific, up. isn't it? Isn't the E in smoky bear specific? Uh, I've got, I'm looking up some like this Smokey's barbecue house with the E, Smoky yeah. Bones Rockford. But here in Madison, Smoky John's is with the no E. Yeah. Um, which is a pretty decent barbecue place. Yeah. Um, it's normally EY here in the States. It is an EY. Okay. That's a traditional. I'm looking up in but... HarperCollins right now. I should look up in Webster's because Webster's follows me on Twitter. Sorry, Webster. The dictionary um, follows you on Twitter? I know. It is, it's the, the supreme irony <laughs> with my typos. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, well, 
so have we have is that does that conclude our taste test? That is, it there does. is one. There are two flavors which I was not able to obtain mm-hmm. this uh, uh, these last two trips. Roadkill. No, no, hot sir. Dog. At Roadkill um, and Hot Dog. I would not share a hot dog if I found it. Wow. Of those because wow, those are John. pretty. Uh, but the, <laughs> as far as classic, to me, as far as classic British flavors for crisps go, I remember, I seem to remember roast beef, but it could have been beef and onion, mm-hmm. which Walker's brought back in 2015. And, but I've not seen this, and it's definitely not in their meaty pack. With the smoky bacon, the roast yeah. chicken, the prog cocktail, and the cheese and onion. Well, of the ones um, we have, then yes, that. Oh, sorry, um, was there? Was there? There was one other one you you were going to say? No, beef and onion, and the other one is more of a seasonal, because I don't often see pickled onion around, uh, but occasionally you'll see pickled onion, and occasionally you'll see Worcestershire sauce, which comes in a purple oh. bag, mm-hmm. um, and occasionally. Uh, another, this is, seems to me, if my memory serves me correctly, a little more rare, um, is Marmite. You can get Marmite flavored crisps. From oh, time wow. To time. So these aren't in the, so what I try to give you is basically what you can get on an average day somewhere in the United Kingdom, um, yeah. of Great Britain, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Um, I'm and, yeah, so these this is this is basically you know the core of British crispdom. All right. Ooh. By the way, here's something which I just learned. I mean, okay, so most most of the time in Britain, salt and vinegar is blue, cheese and onion is green. And I feel I'm being gaslit here because Walker's mm-hmm. cheese and onion is blue, salt yeah. and vinegar is green. And mm-hmm. My memory tells me that when I was a child, it was the other way around. But I went to Walker's. Walker's has got a website, and they've got a essentially answer frequently asked questions page. Mm-hmm. And according to them, their salt and vinegar has always been green, and their cheese and onion has always been blue. Well, and my memory just does not agree with this. But you know, I, I have I'm assuming. Uh... Other people can correct. I uh, can see this and say that yes, they are correct. Look, I'm going to be honest. On this particular episode about British crisps, I did not have Mandela effect on my bingo card, <laughs> but I'm going to write it into the free space in the middle. It's it's and Mandela a lot of effect. Pe- uh, let's, a lot of people, <laughs> but really a lot is. of people let's... agree because Walkers had to actually state yeah. we did not change our colors here. All, so all of our got... lives are a lie. We learn as we age. I, here's what I want to do. Okay. I, sometimes we would go and like eliminate them one by one. Mm-hmm. I think yes. there's a clear winner in this bunch of chi- of crisps, rather. Yeah. And I think it's one of the flavors all three of us ate. Interesting. And I'm just quick, yes or no. Do you have a clear favorite? John, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Mark, do you have a clear favorite? Yes or no? Uh, no. Well, yeah, but it's one of the ones, it's not one of the ones that you It's not going to had... be roasted chicken. I think it's roast. Well, cause here's the thing. It's not just about favorite. We're yes. trying to look objectively and yes. objectively. One thing that I can see that the roast chicken has going for it over the others is it is objectively tastes like it tastes like roast chicken. Really? I, I like the cheese and onion and I'll tell you why because it is, okay. it's the mild actually works in its favor where it doesn't in any of these other crisps. I, the malted, you know, the prawn is like, the notes are all over the place. Like it is, mm-hmm. it is hitting every sense in the exact wrong way. The salt and vinegar, <laughs> the vinegar is so overpowering mm-hmm. that if you don't like malt vinegar, you cannot stomach these chips. The smoky bacon is fine. It's ultimately like a trick. The smell is way better than the taste. Yeah. The cheese and onion has a good smell to it. And then you get alternating notes of the cheese and onion as you go through the bag. Are you picking really this because it's the piece. only one you liked? <laughs> no, it's it's because all the others the have malt one. vinegar in them, so that eliminates like three right, of them off the bat. But it's the first one. It's the first one we ate, and it stuck with me, and I wanted to eat more of it. And I haven't. And I like the smoky bacon, mm-hmm. but I haven't gone back to it because I like I've had that. I yeah. will finish these cheese and onion tonight. I am a fan of the cheese and onion ones. Um, and also I, you know, 
I love my history. And as a history nerd, the fact that these came out in night, the cheese and onion came out in 1952 and were the first time that the Walker's company was like, Oh, someone no- won a Nobel prize for a big piece of science. Let's figure out how to make it, t- make our crisps taste like a plowman's lunch using right. that technology. It is the one that there's all the other ones are standing on its shoulders. And maybe as they through history got added more and more flavor. Not, not just variety, but as far as the punch of the flavor, keeping these pretty mild feels like a cool, good thing to do. So I think, and I, I think that I would argue that the winner is going to be one of the big three, uh, for Walkers, which is the, uh, simply salt or ready salted salt and vinegar or cheese and onion. And of those, I, I would agree with that. Uh, what was your, what was your favorite going in, John? And what are your thoughts? Okay. So here's the interesting thing for me for years, years and years and years, I was all about the salt and vinegar. Mm-hmm. I love salt and vinegar as a flavor. Again, you, you know, my habits of drowning, uh, chips in these things. I was surprised roast chicken was much better than I remembered it mm-hmm. as a kid. Roast chicken was never really stuck with me as a kid, but over the last couple of years, and it's like I, I was telling myself I would only. Put in a vote here as a tiebreaker if it was needed. Yeah. But honestly, my favorite flavor over the last couple of years has been cheese and onion. Wow. I think it's wonderful. It's, it's subtler than the salt and vinegar. It does, uh, have that unique British flavor. You don't find this particular flavor anywhere else in the world that I know of, uh, yeah. you know, possibly Australia. Okay. Ireland. Yes. Mm hmm potatoes as the brand in ireland but you know this is this is very much a flavor of childhood it stands up it's been <laughs> 50 years now um, and when i come back from britain i will pick up these multi-packs for friends but i will tend to pick up a six pack of cheese and onion for myself there you go well people of the world there you go. That sometimes you can have a crisp that you've never had before, and and you understand the feeling of nostalgia that it elicits. Obviously, for John, that's a real nostalgia. He grew up with it. Mark and I did not, but I understand. There's something familiar about the flavor of it, which I think also is what drew me to it. So you can go to England and find these. You also may find, and maybe it's just out here in LA. I'm sure New York has some similar, but there are enclaves of British folks, and so there are British specialty shops owned by Brits where they may have these, mm-hmm. but give, give them a try. In fact, why don't you try that prawn cocktail and get back to Uncle Hal and let me know what you thought wow. of that. Huh? The that. winner of this episode, though, is Cheese and Onion. Thank you, Walkers. Asked and answered. And thank you, John, so much for coming on the show. Where do you want people to find you? What do you got going on right now? Do you have, yeah. uh, do you have more Dork Tower coming out? You have games coming yes. out? You have what's going on? Yeah, so we've got uh, the Dork Tower web strip is at dorktower.com. It's updated three times a week, thanks to an extraordinarily successful Patreon campaign. Uh, there's cool. more Munchkin coming out all the time. Uh, Munchkin has been translated into, I believe, 19 different languages. No I've illustrated kidding. more than 7,500 Munchkin cards. That's so cool. And Munchkin Warhammer and Warhammer 40K is now being sold in the official Warhammer stores all across the world, which is kind of a thrill for a gaming geek like myself. Yeah. So there's all, always more games coming out, always more cartoons coming out. Um, I'm going to be doing a Kickstarter late spring, finally going to be doing the complete run of the over 2,000 Dork Tower web strips online. No have never been kidding. collected in print form before. So that's going to be one of the big projects for the year. That's very That's cool. Dork, Dork D O R K Tower T O W E R, the new flavor from Walkers. Yeah, <laughs> it, you're, they're going to have Dork cocktail. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's really that's really what we do here every week on We Got This with Mark and Hal. We create a delightful and delicious dork cocktail. And uh, if you'd like to become a member of the network that provides that every week, visit maximumfun.org/slash/join pledge drive. Maximumfun.org slash join membership drive is going to be starting next week but in the meantime this topic is closed there are many more topics to discuss so please reach out to us on twitter or you can email us we got this podcast at gmail.com or share your favorite crisp flavors over at facebook.com slash groups slash we got this podcast the greatest place on the internet to safely argue thank you to producer ken plume you can support him at patreon.com slash ken plume thank you to researcher kate mcmanus graphic designer uri kilman and qa engineer jen alba 
And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman, for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, the people of the world, for giving us a chance to try a bunch of crisps. This is not what I thought being a podcast was ever going to turn into. And you know what? It's one of those just delightful surprise days on the show when you get to do something really fun with a really, really fun guest. So, John, thanks for being here. And to the people of the world who have made this possible, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For Hal Loveland, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Loveland. And don't worry, everybody. We got this. We got this. What is that from? That's the Ruddles. Oh, my God. That's brilliant. The Ruddles. Oh, my God. Oh, bravo, Ken. Bravo. Wait, he, they, are they specifically talking about Walker's cheese and onion? Just cheese and onion crisps in general. But, yes, this would be. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Ken. Bravo, bravo. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.